beautiful Christian, my grandma, great and a friend. I can mother of y'all, so it kept me in check, and I appreciate that. He had a lot of women and a wonderful smile. And I'm going to sing this song. I don't 
those, Lord God, that were young, that were older, that were even some that were her age, Lord God, her friends, Lord God, she never missed calling anyone for their birthday. And God, we thank you, Lord God, for the life and the legacy. God, I thank you for this great and awesome opportunity that you've given us, Lord God, to come together. And right now, Lord God, we know, Lord God, without a shadow of a doubt, that you, Lord God, will be with us for your word declares that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And God, that you will catch every tear. God, that you would store them up, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that although we may mourn her loss, we don't mourn and we don't grieve as those who have no hope because we know that in that great getting up morning, Lord God, when, the, when you shall crack the sky, we shall see her again. So, Father, we thank you today and we give you glory. I pray that you will take charge of these services. Bless the wonderful man of this house, Lord God, Reverend David. Lord, Lord God, I pray that you will bless he and his wife. Bless all pulpit guests, Lord God, bless all those in attendance. And I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you will be with us henceforth, now and forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, do we love you, we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. that's open and we will pray that you will limit yourself to two and a half minutes that way you'll get to three minutes <laughs> and we want we want everybody to be able to speak in a timely manner on tonight you may not be on the program tomorrow tell your neighbor you ain't on the program tomorrow tell them tell them tell them tell them you, you might not be on the program tomorrow tonight is your night Tonight is your night. We we pray that you will honor the family wishes and come up after this selection and give us three minutes. And if you don't keep time well, don't worry. I got a timekeeper here today. So if you see Pastor Bailey stand up, that means it's your time to sit down. Come on, sister counts. Good evening, everybody. My name is Myra Counts Anders, and uh, I grew up in the Grove and right down the street from Miss Bobby. I love Miss Bobby. I played with her children, Reggie, Warrell, Jermaine, probably even Lamont. <laughs> the baby Lamont. We were at each other's house just playing, and when Charlene would call, she'd say, Mama, who are you talking to? Myra. I was over at the house talking to Miss Bobby, and we would be sharing stories and going over things that happened on the soaps. And she and I love the same soap. So we would, she said, Mara, what you got to tell me today? What you got to tell me today? I said, okay, Miss Bobby, let's go talk about this. All my children, days of the lives, one life to live, whatever it was. But I enjoyed her company so much and I miss her. And I have fond memories of her. And when my sister went away to school, I was 10 years old, so I was by myself, and I found family with my neighbors. And it was a good time. So this selection that I'm going to sing, it is uh, Charlene told me that Winston Lee Charlene was one of her mother's favorite. And I'm going to do that uh, without music, please. It must have been cold there in my shadow. To never have sunlight on your face. You were content to let me shine. That's your way. You always walked a step behind. Well, I was the one with all the glory. And you were the one with all the strength. A beautiful face without a name for so long. A beautiful smile to hide the pain. Did you ever know that you're my hero? And everything I would like to be. I can fly higher than an eagle, cause 
you'll see her riding a bicycle going on down to the apartment business where her mother was. She made sure she go take care of her. She brought her mother first, her grandmother, come on back around, stop in the church, see if the church was in order. Uh, one thing about Miss Mickens, when I came into the ministry with her, um, she served as a financial secretary. She kept the money, you know. She made sure you paid the dues. <laughs> and she would always um, see, we didn't have a bereavement committee. She was the bereavement committee all by herself. She got Miss Ozzy and a couple more ladies to take for these places to get this food for these bereaved families. She would go there and prepare, fix, de decorate, prepare it, fix it, and clean up. She was a one man, one person chauffeur. But when I came into the ministry with her, she made sure that she paid us no mind. She did it her way. <laughs> we can have meeting after meeting after meeting. We can meet, we can talk, and this and that. And when you come to the program or whatever we had set up, she had to change everything around, but it was nice. <laughs> it was nice. But she would change it all around. She called me one night about 9.30. She said, it's your time. I'm like, tired of doing the programs now. So it's your time to do the program. So I'm up, you know. She, the next morning she called me. Um, you got to go. I said, Nick, you ain't giving me time. You have not given me time. <laughs> so when I found him, went around asking people did they want to do certain things for the program. So I had our secretary, Linda, to uh, make a copy for me. And I dropped the copy to her house. Come starting that Monday night, she, we were in charge of Reverend Daniels and her. Come that Monday night, she done changed the whole program. I just say, oh my God, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it wasn't the time that we met. We had bus to make sure that she even brought us to the house. She went out, fixed us. Um, of birds and stuff like that. But she did it her way. She, it just had me. I called her one day, I said, traffic backed up. I'm right here on US. I should be there in five minutes. Give me five minutes. You think she waited for me? Not hardly. She had to stop at me. But that was something. But she had the loving spirit. We didn't fight, we didn't fuss, or nothing like that. But she, she wasn't like she's doing now. She was really, really good. That just a body man. Now you can see that smile on her face. She's at rest. She's at peace. So, and with that being said, I somebody getting up. I'm gonna pass this mic because I think my two minutes up. <laughs> Now don't you say that. <laughs> I just go real quick second. Basically, I wasn't going to get up, but I decided to get up. Um, because the only thing I really want to say after that song, it really fit Miss Barty. And I've known her for a long time since I was a baby. Uh, I am uh, Worrell's niece and law or niece. And Miss Barty is more like a mother. She's a grandmother. She's a friend. And she walked that walk, very soft spoken, very elegant, very dainty. She's a doll baby. I always call her doll baby. I remember one morning I was at home. She was walking by down by this little house early in the morning. I was standing at the gate. And I'm like, where are you going this time of morning? Walking. 
I said, well, I can wear exercising. And I'm like, wow, this lady walked all the way from her house to the back, all the way around over to what street is pro. And I'm like, this lady strong. You know, and she never gave up. So at times I did see her, she'll look at me right in my eyes. When she talked to you, she looked straight at you. And she would ask you, how's it going? She made sure that you were okay. So I just wanted to bring that up to the family. She's a beautiful person. I really admire her a lot. And she's gonna always be a dog baby to me. And I will take that with me and I will walk that walk just like this bar. Okay. Yes. 
from Deacon Fleming again. Then this, and I'm following the program. And then the family members, if you want to say something, you know you're not on the program uh, on tomorrow. If you want to say something following this election, that will be your time. And then Minister Betty Brooks is going to come with the prayer. And then I will come back with remarks at 7 o'clock uh, so that we can get ready. The Brother Hall can get ready for tomorrow. Is that all right? And I, I know some fish is being fried down there, so let's have church and get ready to lick our fingers with some mustard and hot sauce. Oh, y'all don't do that in Coconut Grove? Oh, oh. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, Pastor. I'm going to be real brief, and I'm going to be very impactful. I have something to say that I think will be very impactful for all of us. Miss Bobby, when I think of Miss Bobby, I think of pure, unadulterated, unselfish love. She was pure love. She walked it, she talked it. It was just in her being, in her spirit. I shared something with Miss Bobby and her family and her guests at her 70th birthday which was held downstairs here in the, in the fellowship hall. And I want to share it with you all today. Because Miss Bobby had a very, very impactful way on my life. Miss Bobby, through her love, when my parents, my father, and my mother were going through there are some difficult times in my father's last days, Miss Bobby was there supporting my mother all the way, doing things around my house that my sister Paul and I should have been doing but weren't doing. But through her love, she would cook for mama. She would clean. I mean, I saw that, and I saw that from several other members of Macedonia. And that love had such a strong bearing on me, it brought me back to Macedonia. Love that you show could either draw you or push you away. Miss Bobby had a very drawing love. And she, she just meant it. She wasn't phony about it at all. And she loved herself some Jesus. She would say, thank God for Jesus. And I'm so happy that I had the pleasure of working alongside Sister Bobby and Deacon James Bethel. They asked me after many years, many trying, to come along with them to assist them with the communing our sick and shut in. And that was some of the most rewarding experience I've had in my entire life. That first Sunday, every first Sunday of the month, we knew church service was just the beginning. But after the service, after we broke down the communion table, put everything up, we would go and commune our sick and shut in. And we would start, the way we used to do it, we would start all the way on the north end of the county and work ourselves back to the south end. And Sister Bobby and Deacon Bethel, when you get the two of them together and they start talking with some of our sick and shut-ins, you would hear all kind of history of Coconut Grove. So it was just a beautiful joy to be blessed to experience a loving, kind person like Miss Bobby. And her spirit, her memory will go on and last forever because of that love that she gave to a human being. So with that, I'll just say thank you. God bless us for having this poppy. Thank you. Oh, we are all of God's mother. 
body. I had to go in and hop a bed, which you all know. It's a, a tunnel that you go in that puts about 100 tons of oxygen in your body to kill the bacteria that was floating through my body. But this body, when I reached out to her, I told her my story. She said, look at God. Look at God. You're still here with me. I said, yes, my Lord. Church with Pastor Robert Brooks 
down south, all the way in the great big Purim. Yeah, I know y'all got that. God is good, and she has such a sweet spirit, and she was witty too. She was, and I just thank God for that beautiful smile, and she just showed a lot of love, evidenced by all of you here tonight. Yeah, it shows. But I'm here to pray. Close us out. Praise God. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to gather with the saints, Lord, to help celebrate the life and the legacy of a wonderful woman, a woman that you fill with so much love, with so much wisdom. Oh, God, we just thank you right now for the seeds that she planted. We thank you, Father, for the children, for the grandchildren, for the great-grandchildren, and for all of those adopted children, those spiritual children, oh, God the neighbors and the God children, all of those that she were able, oh God, to minister to by the life that she lived. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for your love for all of us. And we ask that you be with the family right now, oh God, that they not grieve as if there's no hope. Because, oh Father, when we go in you, when we die in you, Lord, we shall rise again. We all have to travel that route, Father, in the name of Jesus. So we all have to give our life to you, accept you as our personal Savior, believing in you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now that you will continue to bind the family together with your undying love. We thank you, Lord, for you don't make any mistakes. We thank you, Lord, for the word that will come forth on tomorrow, Father, the eulogy, O oh God, that someone will give their life to you after hearing that word on tomorrow, Father. We thank you for filling the pastor that will give the word, Father, that you will allow him to speak the word, O oh God, that those who will hear a word from you and not see the man, but hear a word from the man, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now for all the staff that's working with the family. We thank you for all the provisions. We thank you, O oh God, for all of those that have worked diligently, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus, for the floral arrange arrangements, for the prayers, O oh God, for the food, oh God, for everything that has been done to help celebrate Miss Bobby on this day. Lord, we thank you. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that you would give us all safe passage as we prepare to travel going different ways, but never leaving your presence. For you say you'll never leave us and you'll never forsake us, that you'll be with us always. But you didn't stop there. You say you'll be with all those generations to come, those that are near and those that are far. Lord, we thank you for all the kind words that's been spoken on tonight. For those who poured out their heart, oh God, to show their love and their gratitude for knowing Miss Bobby. We give you the praise, we give you the honor, and we give you the glory for all things. And we love you, Lord, and we thank you for loving us. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight. Oh Lord, thy strength and thy redeemer. Amen. 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 Come on, give God a praise. As we, as we make ready to leave, as we stand up all over this place, you can stand all over this place. If you have not viewed yet, we kindly ask that you would view real briefly on you and then walk on out the door so that range staff could do what they need to do. Is that all right? And then we'll go downstairs and fellowship uh, in a Christian manner uh, in one accord. Is that all right? All right, all right, all right. If you have not viewed, if you have not viewed, you can come now. You can come, and then we ask that you expeditiously make your way downstairs. <laughs>